Now, keeping our HMOs at full occupancy is always the aim, but of course, there's due diligence. We need to ensure that we're putting the right people in the right property. Now, in this video, I'm going to be sharing some of the ways that we carry out our due diligence when we are taking on HMO tenants. So again, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification button to get an alert of all my upcoming videos. As well as investing in property, I also run a letting agency, so I come across a whole load of tenants, whether it be for HMOs or for single lets. So one of the first things I'm going to share is some of the big no-no's that you need to look out for when you're looking for tenants for your HMO. Now, one of the big no-no's is when somebody comes in and offers you a lot more than what you're advertising the property for. So what do I mean by this? Let's say you've got a four bedroom HMO and you want to rent it out on a room by room basis and somebody contacts you and says that they want to take on the whole property. Now I'm not talking about taking it on as a rent to rent, they just want to rent the whole property from you and you want it all gone for let's say 17, 1800 pounds and they're offering you 2,800 pounds and they'll take the property off you, no worries. That's a big no-no, that's a big red flag. What that usually means is that they're likely to take the property and use it for illegal activities. Most of the times where I'm based, it means that they're trying to use the house to grow cannabis. Another big no-no is when they want to move into the property almost immediately. What is the rush? And also, this wouldn't allow you to carry out any due diligence. Now, the final big no-no I'd say is if they want to pay their rent cash all through the duration of their tenancy. Ideally, you want your rent to be transferred to your business account or personal account, whichever one, so you can keep record of things in case anything comes up in the future. Now, of course, when you're referencing a tenant, there's certain things you have to look out for. If they're a working professional, you want two forms of ID, you want um, pay slips three months and you want bank statements also three months. The reason you do this is um, to check that the payments on the pay slips match with the bank statement. Alternatively, if you don't want to do this yourself, there's several referencing agencies which charge a small fee, as little as £10 or £15 to carry out the whole referencing process for you. Now, one thing I would recommend is when referencing a potential tenant, rather than getting one landlord reference, get two previous landlord references. Why do you do this? Because if a tenant is in arrears and the current landlord is trying to get rid of them and they now apply to move into a new property and the landlord gets a reference request, the landlord wants the tenant gone. So clearly the landlord is going to give them a good reference in order for them to leave their property. But now if you go back to previous landlords, the previous landlord before the current one has no ties and has no issues. So if the tenant is genuinely bad, that landlord will freely give the information. Now with a student property, of course you're going to need a guarantor to stand in for the student. Another thing to bear in mind is if they are UK based students that get student finance, I always collect the rent termly so they do not have the opportunity to spend all their finances on other things and not be able to pay the rent. So as soon as their student finance comes in, they transfer me three months rent straight away. I also deal with a lot of international students. Now, international students that are newly coming into the country, majority of them do not have guarantors. So sometimes what I do is agree with them and they pay six months rent up front. So they cover the whole of their tenancy, which gives me security and also gives them peace of mind. Now, again, with students and professionals all come from different walks of life and different backgrounds. For example, some tenants that are professionals, they work night shifts and some work normal nine to five hours. So what I tend to do is try not to mix everybody up. I definitely try not to mix professionals and students all together. Sometimes it works, but most of the time it doesn't. So what I do is try to put in one HMO all workers who do night shifts so their sleeping pattern and their time of waking up is also quite similar. And the same with students, I try to put the younger students together and the more mature students together to avoid any type of conflict. Now a key point to note is when you get someone that's shown interest in renting one of your properties and you ask them why they're moving and they say because their landlord is selling, this is an opportunity for you to get another property deal. So what you're going to do is contact the landlord yourself 
to say you want to carry out a reference to found, find out more about their current tenant and then you move on to start a conversation with them as to why they're selling and what, what they want for the property and you could do your own due diligence to see if it's a deal that works for you and if it's something you'd like to take on. Now, when a new tenant moves into one of our HMOs, we provide them with tenant manuals. I would recommend this if you have a large HMO portfolio or you have a large rent to rent portfolio or a portfolio of HMOs that you're managing. This really helps because it has all the key information, all the key points of contact, and it also deals with issues like avoiding mold and damp in a room. Sometimes people come from different parts of the world and they're not used to the UK weather. They leave the window closed at all times, 365 days a year, which then causes damp and mold in the bedroom. So these key points are all stated in the brochure to help the tenant and also help us reduce the cost of maintenance. So if you found this video useful, hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button.